Let's talk it over with Red Hawks punter Alex Knight. Uh, welcome to the show. Now you you kind of got here late, so I saw they just delivered your food. You haven't had time to to get it, to get anything for lunch yet, right? Not yet. Just been just got out of class, and I'm just excited to be here. All right, what class did you have? Uh, communications. Uh, well, communications. There yes. we go. So you know you got prep <laughs> before you put the headset on. Uh, what's your major? Right now, just general studies, but I'm seeing what I want to do because my dad's in the real estate. And I really like that, so I'm interested in getting my real estate license after I graduate. So, Well, there's a lot of real estate down in Florida. You're from Boca Raton. Tell us about uh, growing up there. Well, was, like Coach Duke said, I was very blessed to come from a two-parent home, and they really like helped me out getting through all the stuff, especially transferring from St. Andrews to St. Thomas. Going down to Fort Lauderdale was a totally different change for me because the culture – and the football was just like from here to there. It was ridiculous how good with Coach Smith and Coach Kutsula showing me all this stuff. They really like prepped me for college. So I'm very excited I went there. All right. Tell us what kind of a program because they're very successful. I know you won a state championship in 2012 at St. Thomas Aquinas. Tell us about that place. It's a football factory down there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I remember my first uh, ESPN game. It was against De La Salle my sophomore year. We were waiting for before we go out for halftime, and Michael Irvin walked in and came and talked to us to get us before the game, and it was like, wow, that's Michael Irvin. Like, Michael Irvin, the Hall of Famer from Dallas Cowboys, coming and talk to us for the game. It was unbelievable getting us all pumped up for the game, and we came out big, a big victory that night. All right, so you grew up a Dolphins fan then? Yes, I am. <laughs> All right, uh, you like the, the Hurricanes, the Knolls, or the Gators? It's all about the U, baby. All right, so it's Miami. So you're close. You're close. And I said I was stationed in the Navy down in Key West, Florida for four years. Have you been down to Key West? Yes, I've been down to Key West a couple times. Me and my dad went fishing down there. It was pretty fun, but that only when I was like eight, so it was a long time ago. But uh, there's a lot of good fishing down in the Florida Keys, yes, right? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Very and, good tuna fishing down there. And you talk about uh, real estate. That is expensive real estate down in the Florida Keys. Yes, it is. That's why you have to know what you're doing down there to buy, know when to buy, know when to sell. All right. Uh, there are a lot of alligators in Florida. I know when we would travel, my grandmother used to live in uh, South Fort Myers, so I would head up, and you'd cut over through the Everglades, and about every 10 miles, you see a big sign, swamp buggy rides, airboat rides, come see the gators. Uh, that's a big industry down there. Yeah, but I'm more from the east like east side by the beach. I'm closer, so I really don't see that as much. But a lot of my friends from Fort Lauderdale live in Weston and Davie out there, and they're really into that stuff, like hunting gators and all that stuff. <laughs> all right. Now, your brother, Tyler, played lacrosse at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Did you, you play some lacrosse growing up yourself? Yeah, I played a little bit just because my brother was into it. I didn't really like it that much. It was just something to do other than football because I didn't know for sure if I wanted to play college football yet until my senior year. So, But he was unbelievable. He was an All-American. He won state like five years in a row because he started on varsity eighth grade, ninth, tenth, and all the way to 12th. He was All-American his senior year, went to UMass, and had a great career. Well, talk about uh, the, the times. Now, you could go out in the backyard or in, in the back driveway – and play a little one-on-one -on -one in basketball. You can't really – can you play one-on-one -on -one in lacrosse? Yeah, you kind of. We had a net in the backyard, but it was – I never liked playing against my brother because he's like 6'4 and really big, and every time he shot, he'd hit me because I had to play <laughs> goalie, and I always get bruises, and it was – and the ball, lacrosse ball's hard. Like, it's not like a football where it's a little squishy. Like, it's hard. So when you get hit by it, you get a big bruise, like, every time. A bruised up Alex Knight, <laughs> uh, our guest here on the Red Hawks Coaches Show. Now, you did some kicking. In high school as well, right? Punting and kicking? No, I did not punt until I came to college. I just I only kicked from freshman year. I started kicking to my senior year at St. Thomas. And I didn't learn how to punt really until like I got here. When I got Coach Chu came in, he's like, Alex, we need you to punt. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. And Crum was the kicker, and he was doing unbelievable. He still is. And so when I learned how to punt, Coach was like, got to do it. got to do this. got to do this. And he always get on me every single day. And yelling at me and screaming at me, hitting me with a piece of paper, like, come on, focus, focus, focus. Yeah, so it helped me a lot, though. Watching you punt, and Simos had some good punters over the years. David Simonoff was an All-American here. I mean, they've, they've had a couple of All-American punters over the years at Southeast. Your ball, uh, the the height on the ball and the way that it turns over for a spiral, how good does that feel? I, you hear baseball players say when they hit it on a sweet spot and it's a home run, you know, it's the best feeling in the world. How good does it feel when you hit one that you know is going to be 60-plus? 
Well, it feels really good, one, because if it's good ball placement, I'm not going to get yelled at. And two, if um, the returner calls for a fair catch, I know I did my job to help my teammates out. And sometimes when you've got a leg as strong as yours, you got to be careful sometimes of outkicking your coverage. Explain to people what it means to outkick your coverage. Well, like 40 yards is what we're supposed to net every single time. And if I outkick against Mizzou, I hit like a 60-yard punt, and I way outkicked my coverage because the returner has a lot more room to like move around in open field because when you kick it 40 yards and high every single time your returners have enough time to get down there he'll call a fair catch or make the tackle but if you give him like 10 to 15 yards to spare especially against a team like Mizzou he's gonna have time to run that's why that 35 yard return against Mizzou happened because I out kicked the coverage well you had a good punting day on Saturday against Eastern Illinois. I know any time that the ball leaks into the end zone, I know you, you get disappointed. Uh, you did have a 65-yard punt. Uh, what is the longest uh, punt that you can remember maybe in practice? We know yeah, a 65-yarder uh, is your is your long for the Red Hawks, but uh, how, how about in practice? What's the longest punt? I think my longest punt at practice was during punt block. It was There's a little win, so I can't take all the credit for it, and it was like 72, I think, 72-yard punt. And it was on the top field during pump block. Wow. So you came here as a kicker. Now, do you and McCrum, uh, do you guys get competitive in practice? Do you, do you put it up on the tee and see who can uh, kick the longest field goals? No, not at all. McCrum's a way better kicker than I am. Like, he's legs way stronger. I like like to mess around a little bit, but I'm done with kicking. I'm over it. I'm excited to punt. All right. Uh, is, it, is this something that you would like to uh, see if you could get a, a sniff maybe uh, at, at the next level? Or is it real estate only once your Red Hawk uh. days are over? I definitely want to try my best to see if I can make it to the NFL because it's always a dream. Everyone's dream is college ball players to make it to the next level. So hopefully if I keep out doing what I'm doing, have a good year, get a lot more consistent, like Coach Chu's saying, and I feel like I can do it. Well, one thing, you don't have to worry about uh, seeing if you can find an NFL scout to come to your practice. Yeah. They're there every practice watching Paul. Does that ever enter into your mind? Man, I got to focus. This NFL scout may see me kick a 73-yarder. Uh, not really because he's here for Paul. Like NFL coaches are like very strict on their schedule, and I know if I do whatever I need to do and Coach Chuk will help me out get to where I need to be. All right, uh, let's talk about this Eastern Kentucky game coming up. This, this is a big football game, and the opposing punter for Eastern Kentucky is a guy right on your heels. You're one, he's two in the OVC and punting. Yeah, he I, he had a couple great games. I saw him, he had one game, he averaged like 50 yards, and that's really good, but I'm excited because then it's more competition for me, and I love that. All right, uh, in terms of 50-plus yard punts, I want to make sure I get it right, uh, already 10 over 50 yards, you've got two 65-yard punts. Uh, so kicking the ball over 50 yards, I know you say, hey, it's got to be 40, but uh, if you can consistently be kicking balls about 50 yards, you got to feel like you're doing your job. Yeah, especially if I'm putting a lot of hang time on. If I'm kicking at 50-plus and they're fair catching it, I know Coach Duke will be happy and I'll get my job, job done. Okay, we talked about lacrosse. Did you play any other sports uh, in Florida growing up? Yes, I, I actually never played soccer, so that's kind of a shocker for a lot of people, kind of a kicker. But I played baseball. I was a lefty pitcher in baseball, and I liked that a lot. I don't know, maybe I should have stuck with it, but who knows. Are you a Marlins fan? Yeah, kind of. They're all right. They never really win, though. So, <laughs> Well, you've been here for a while. This is a, this is a pretty hot Cardinal area. You, you follow the Cardinals at all? Yes, I've just been watching it because the Cardinals and Club, Cubs playing because the playoffs. So it's exciting to watch that. How much do you have to hear Slania talking about the Cubs? All the time, every day of the week, 24-7. He's like, let's see those Cubs go. Come on, Cubs. All the time. Well, he couldn't have been a happy camper the other night. Uh, Friday night, uh, they lose, so he's going into the Eastern Illinois game. Uh, probably a little ang played a little angry last week. Yeah, probably. But Sean Slaney, he's always angry. All right, uh, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts moving forward here? Homecoming? Uh, you gonna have some family in town? Yeah, both my parents. I'm blessed for them coming up again. They've been coming up so much this year, and I just can't wait to see them. All right, uh, that's gonna be at one o'clock on Saturday against Eastern Kentucky. Boy, it'd be, a, it'd be a nice win. There were a couple of ranked teams that came in here last year and left with L's, Southeastern Louisiana, and ironically enough, on homecoming, 20th ranked Tennessee State bit the dust. Uh, a chance to, for you guys to put another brick in the brickyard, right? Yes, I, all I, I think is we get the job done. Coach says, do your job and work on hard focus this week. And hard focus is like not knowing your plays and assignment and then doing them on the field in the moment. If we play in the moment this week, I really believe we can beat them. 
All right, that's Alex Knight. Are you on Twitter? Yes, I am. All right, give us your Twitter address so we can get you to one or two followers here. <laughs> it's A Night Kick at just A Night Kick. A Night Kick. A K N I G H T Kick. Yep. All right. <laughs> we'll be looking for you on Twitter, Alex. Thanks Thank so much. much Good luck me. the rest of the year. Thank you for having me. Alex Knight, uh, the Red Hawks punter, top punter in the Ohio Valley Conference.